we've got to be cautious here. And, and also, I, I think it doesn't work to do all this in a lab. You've got to get these products out into the world. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the things you need to know about this tech giant on the rise and its most famous creation. I was wondering if Sam and Elon could share with us their positive vision of AI's impact on our coming life. Number 10, training on a vast data set. Now, foundation models are pre-trained on large amounts of unlabeled and self-supervised data, meaning the model learns from patterns in the data in a way that produces generalizable and adaptable output. And large language models are instances of foundation models applied specifically to text and text-like things. I'm talking about things like code. Long before a conversational AI can respond to your queries, it must undergo an intensive learning process, essentially consuming an unfathomable amount of human knowledge. OpenAI's models, including the family that powers ChatGPT, are trained on truly colossal data sets drawn from the internet and various digitized books. These models can be tens of gigabytes in size and trained on enormous amounts of text data. We're talking potentially petabytes of data here. So to put that into perspective, a text file that is, let's say, one gigabyte in size, that can store about 178 million words. This massive ingestion of text allows the AI to learn patterns, grammar, facts, and even nuances of human language, equipping it with the broad general knowledge it then leverages in conversation. The scale of this data is a key differentiator, enabling the AI to generate coherent and contextually relevant responses across a myriad of topics. This is a neural network, and for GPT, that is a transformer. And the transformer architecture enables the model to handle sequences of data, like sentences or lines of code. And transformers are designed to understand the context of each word in a sentence by considering it in relation to every other word. Number nine, GPT-3, a massive predecessor. Before the world was introduced to ChatGPT, there was a foundational model that set the stage for its astonishing capabilities, GPT-3. You know, this is, comes out of the group at OpenAI, and you know, they're, you know, they've been relatively careful in what they've claimed about the system. But I think this, 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 uh, uh, as clearly as Eugene Gustman was not in advance over Eliza. Released by OpenAI in 2020, this massive language model was a significant leap forward, boasting 175 billion parameters, making it one of the largest neural networks ever created at the time. Its ability to generate human-like text was so advanced that it could perform a wide array of tasks from writing articles and code to answering questions often indistinguishably from human output. GPT-3's unprecedented scale and performance were crucial in demonstrating the potential of large language models and paved the way for the development of its more accessible conversational successor. You can ask it to write a poem about topic X in the style of Poet Y, mm -hmm. and it will have a go at that. Yeah. And it will do, you know, not a perf not a great job, not an amazing job, but, you know, a passable job. You know, definitely, you know, as as good as, you know... You know, in, in, in many cases, I would say better than I would have done, right? Number eight, Sam Altman was ousted, then immediately reinstated. The tech world has thrown has been thrown into chaos over the weekend when the company that gave us ChatGPT fired its CEO. Sam Altman, who has drawn comparisons to tech giants like Steve Jobs, was dismissed by the OpenAI board Friday. The move came as a complete surprise to everyone, including OpenAI's biggest investor, Microsoft. In a dramatic corporate saga that captivated the tech world, OpenAI co-founder and CEO Sam Altman was abruptly fired by the company's board of directors in November 2023. The surprise ousting sent shockwaves through the industry, raising questions about the company's future and its internal governance. This is an unprecedented show of support from OpenAI staffers for their former CEO, Sam Altman. More than 700 employees, that's 95% of the company, say they are ready to follow Altman to Microsoft, where he's set to build a new AI venture. However, the decision quickly led to widespread internal dissent including threats of mass resignations from hundreds of open AI employees and immense pressure from major investors, most notably Microsoft. Within days, the board capitulated to the overwhelming demands, leading to Altman's triumphant reinstatement as CEO and a significant restructuring of the company's leadership. Well, I think it has revealed just how unstable some of these institutions can be, how fragile they can be. And we're talking about AI safety. This yeah. is very consequential. I mean, the future of humanity may depend on it.
Altman made a brief statement on X saying he loved open AI and that everything he'd done over the past few days has been in service of keeping this team and its mission together. Number seven, the foundational transformer architecture. Transformers are models that can translate text, write poems and op-eds, and even generate computer code. These have been used in biology to solve the protein folding problem. Transformers are like this magical machine learning hammer that seems to make every problem into a nail. If you've heard of the trendy new ML models BERT or GPT-3 or T5, all of these models are based on transformers. The breakthrough behind modern large language models like ChatGPT can largely be attributed to a specific neural network design, the transformer architecture. Introduced by Google and University of Toronto researchers in 2017, this innovative framework revolutionized natural language processing by efficiently handling long-range dependencies in text, a task previous architectures struggled with. Remember GPT-3, that model that writes poetry and code and has conversations? That was trained on almost 45 terabytes of text data, including, like, almost the entire public web. So if you remember anything about transformers, let it be this. Combine a model that scales really well with a huge data set and the results will probably blow your mind. Unlike earlier recurrent neural networks, transformers process entire sequences of data in parallel, significantly speeding up training times and allowing for the development of much larger models. OpenAI adopted and further refined this architecture, making it the bedrock upon which the sophisticated language generation capabilities of GPT models are built, enabling them to understand and produce coherent, contextually rich human language. Transformers can create whole new documents of their own, for example, like write a whole blog post. And beyond just language, transformers have done things like learn to play chess, and perform image processing that even rivals the capabilities of convolutional neural networks. Number six, training with human feedback, the key to open AI success. At this point, it is important to remember that these models are trained on real world data that might include harmful or biased content. And as a result, when prompted to do so, they might create biased, toxic, or harmful content. And they might even produce illegal advice. While large language models are powerful, simply training them on vast text data isn't enough to make them consistently helpful and safe. This is where a crucial technique called reinforcement learning from human feedback, or RLHF, comes into play. If I ask an LLM, how can I get revenge on somebody who's wronged me? Well, without the benefit of RLHF, we might get a response that says something like, spread rumors about them to their friends. OpenAI engineers employed RLHF to fine-tune ChatGPT, where human annotators rank various AI-generated responses for quality, helpfulness, and safety. This feedback is then used to train a reward model, which in turn guides the main language model to produce outputs that are more aligned with human preferences and ethical guidelines. This iterative process of human evaluation and AI refinement is instrumental in making models like ChatGPT less prone to generating harmful or nonsensical content. Well, RLHF is basically sticking essentially like a smiley face on top of this, mm -hmm. where it's essentially giving you, um, it's basically hiding this mess. It's hiding the fact that it's, you know, this chaotic like population of text that it's modeled. And instead, uh, it's going to provide you with a, a, a very friendly interface into specific parts of that uh, mass of people it's modeling. Which brings us to our next entry, number five, the challenge of hallucinations. This is meant to be what I just recorded, but it had made it all up. I mean, at this point, ChatGTP is gaslighting me. No such thing exists. It's all complete fake. And finally, AI confesses. Despite their impressive capabilities, even the most advanced AI models like ChatGPT are not infallible and occasionally exhibit a phenomenon known as hallucinations. This refers to the AI generating plausible sounding but factually incorrect or entirely fabricated information presenting it as truth. The technology is always improving and newer versions tend to do a better job at staying accurate. See there, it's saying things are getting better but the data suggests the opposite, so I press it. Can you give me the specific stats from the, late, the most recent OpenAI study into the newest models of ChatGPT's hallucination rate? These imaginative falsehoods arise because the models are primarily designed to predict the most statistically probable next word rather than to retrieve and verify facts. Addressing hallucinations is a significant ongoing challenge for OpenAI, as it directly impacts the trustworthiness and reliability of the AI's output, especially in critical applications. In California, one attorney learned that lesson the hard way. 
A state appeals court fined him $10,000 after ChatGPT generated 21 out of 23 fake legal quotes in his filing. Researchers are continuously developing new techniques to mitigate this issue, aiming for more factually grounded responses. Number four, how ChatGPT works, predicting the next word. Now, during training, the model learns to predict the next word in a sentence. So the sky is, it starts off with a, with a random guess. Uh, the sky is bug. Uh, but with each iteration, the model adjusts its internal parameters to reduce the difference between its predictions and the actual outcomes. At its core, the seemingly magical ability of ChatGPT to engage in complex conversations boils down to a sophisticated process of predicting the next word. When you type a prompt, the model analyzes the input and, based on its extensive training, calculates the most probable sequence of words to follow. It doesn't understand in a human sense, but rather discerns intricate statistical relationships within the vast data it has processed. Each word it generates influences the probability distribution for the subsequent word, creating a flowing and coherent narrative. This iterative prediction mechanism allows ChatGPT to construct sentences, paragraphs, and even entire essays that often mimic human-level communication. So the model keeps doing this, gradually improving its word predictions until it can reliably generate coherent sentences. Forget about bug. It can figure out it's blue. Number three, Microsoft's billions in investment. Let's talk about the Microsoft deal for a second, because you took a billion dollars from Microsoft. Um, I think there was some confusion about what that actually meant, the billion dollars. Can you just explain what kind of deal this is? is it, it's not just Azure credits, right? The rapid ascent and immense resources of OpenAI are inextricably linked to a colossal strategic partnership with Microsoft. The tech giant initially invested $1 billion in OpenAI in 2019, followed by an additional multi-billion dollar investment, reportedly around $10 billion, announced in early 2023. So we'll be running all of our things on Azure, uh, and uh, that we're working together to build... Exclusively. That, that's Azure. right, that's right. And uh, that we're working together to build these massive supercomputers and push forward AI technology. This massive financial backing provides OpenAI with the crucial capital needed for expensive AI research, development, and the enormous computational power required to train its large models. In return, Microsoft gains exclusive access to OpenAI's cutting-edge AI technology, integrating it deeply into its own products like Azure, Bing, and Microsoft 365, significantly boosting its competitive edge in the AI arms race. Microsoft uh, is going to own 27% on an as-converted, diluted basis, inclusive of all owners, that's employees, other investors, the OpenAI Foundation. So uh, they were 32.5% until a recent uh, round, but there are 27 percent, uh, and that is being valued at $135 billion. Number two, OpenAI's founding mission. Yeah, I, I think, look, there is a really positive vision here, right? I, I think there are, the science fiction version is either that we enslave it or it enslaves us, but there's this uh, happy symbiotic vision, which I don't think is the default case, but what we should work towards. I think already, um, humans and AI are co-evolving and no one's paid attention to this yet. OpenAI was initially founded in 2015 as a nonprofit organization with a lofty, ambitious mission to ensure that artificial general intelligence, AGI, benefits all of humanity. Recognizing the immense costs associated with developing advanced AI, the organization later restructured in 2019, creating a capped profit entity under the nonprofit parent. They can be a full profit business. But they're a public benefit corporation is what they're turning into. Basically, the whole raison d'etre of OpenAI was to build artificial general intelligence, but for the good of humanity. Yeah, That's right. why initially it was a not-for-profit, but then suddenly they realized they needed a ton of money to be able to access the compute to build AGI, and therefore the awkwardness began. This unique hybrid structure allows OpenAI to attract significant investment capital and top talent by offering financial returns to investors, albeit with a predefined cap while still retaining its original benevolent mission at its core. This innovative model aims to balance the pursuit of groundbreaking AI with ethical development and widespread societal benefit. And so I think the happy vision of the future is sort of humans and AI in a symbiotic relationship, distributed AI where it sort of empowers a lot of different individuals, not this single AI that kind of governs everything that we all do that's you know, a million times smarter, a billion times smarter than any other entity. So I think that's what we should work towards. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications.
Number one, ChatGPT's unprecedented user growth. In the world of artificial intelligence, there's been one name that's been on everyone's lips lately. ChatGPT. 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 OpenAI, the San Francisco-based startup that created ChatGPT, opened the tool up for public testing in November 2022. In under a week, the AI model amassed over a million users, according to OpenAI's CEO. When ChatGPT was publicly released in November 2022, its adoption rate shattered all previous records for consumer applications, firmly establishing it as a global phenomenon. Within five days of its launch, the conversational AI had already amassed over 1 million users. By January 2023, it had reached an astounding 100 million active users monthly, making it the fastest growing consumer application in history. This week, the chatbot became the fastest growing app ever. That's right, if a UBS, uh, the Swiss bank UBS study is to be believed, it shows that ChatGPT hit 100 million users, that's day, uh, monthly active users, in just two months. Compare that to the wildly successful TikTok, which hit the same milestone in nine months. This explosive growth wasn't just a tech fad. It underscored the widespread public interest and immediate utility people found in interacting with advanced AI, cementing ChatGPT's status as a transformative technology that reshaped expectations for AI accessibility and capability. Why do you think it's captured people's imagination? I think people really have fun with it and they see the possibility and they see the ways this can help them, this can inspire them, this can help people create, help people learn, help people do all of these different tasks. And it is a technology that rewards experimentation and use in creative ways. What do you think of ChatGPT and OpenAI? Are there any groundbreaking facts we missed? Be sure to let us know in the comments below.